In this video, we'll show you how to manage your projects within Capsule. Our project boards allow you to gain a visual representation of your projects and where they are in your process. Implementing the features available within this area is a really powerful way to manage your team's deliverables in one place. There's a variety of ways in which you can adapt projects. Let's take a look at some of the benefits of using this versatile feature. Projects are Capsule's project management tool. They are highly customizable and allow you to keep everything that relates to a particular project or piece of work in one common place. Attach documents, schedule reminders with tasks or tracks, and store all the relevant communication together. The feature can be a really great place for managing post-sales work, such as client onboarding, your support processes, overseeing the delivery of a physical product, or delivering a service. We also recommend implementing projects for helping oversee your events and marketing activities. From consultancy to account management, projects can be tailored for your business and the industry you operate in. We have two different views that you can switch between to help drill down on upcoming and completed work. Here you can see our project boards. These boards help visualize your processes, and you can clearly see the key stages within our Kanban style view. Users of our Teams and Enterprise plans benefit from the ability to build multiple project boards, each with their own unique stages. This comes in really helpful if you offer multiple products or if you manage different services which involve their own processes. We can also click here to open the project list view. From here, you can run different filters and drill down on the work that's open or has been completed on your account. We'll start by navigating back to our boards and looking at best practices for implementing. Projects flow through the stages of a board from left to right as each deliverable is achieved. I can easily grab one of my open projects and move it along, like so. You'll also notice at the bottom of the page, it gives me the option to move to another board or close if the work is completed. The tile view also summarizes the following information, which contact record the project relates to, its name, the expected close date, the number of open tasks, the number of attachments, the number of completed activities, and the owner. It's a really powerful view for managing and staying on top of the services that you need to deliver. If you'd like to set up a new project board, you'll need to have administrator access. Start by clicking on your name in the top right corner, account settings, project boards, and now you'll find the add board button. From here, you can see a summary of the active boards and you can also find any that were previously archived. Now, if I click add board, I need to give the board a name and I can also enter an optional description. For this example, I'm going to call my board client onboarding. Once you've added the relevant information, click save. We now need to add our stages. Each stage represents a different column on the board view. Think of these as checkpoints, which define a key part of your project flow. Having clearly defined stages will improve visibility and help your prioritization. If I click add stage, again, I need to enter the name. In this example, we'll call the stage welcome as it's the first step of our onboarding. I can add a description to help if applicable, and then save. You'd then repeat this process for all the stages that will be needed. Once I'm happy with what I've set up, I can use drag and drop to easily reorder the stages. This reflects the order that they will be displayed on the board, with the stage at the top of the list being displayed on the left of the board, and the stage at the bottom of the list on the right of the board. We recommend tailoring this journey so it helps reflect all the necessary touch points of your process. Now that we've added all the appropriate stages, we can navigate back to projects by clicking here. If I click on the board filter, I can jump between the different processes which we've set up and we'll now find our client onboarding board. This helps ensure that each project sits clearly within the relevant process. You can also filter by owner, team, if you're a user of the Teams or Enterprise plan, and also tag. These filters are really helpful for segmentation and helping you focus specifically on the work that might be assigned to you. 
Let's now create a new project. You can now use the quick add button that's located within the column stages. This will automatically create a new project for you at the correct stage and is a great time saver. For this example, we are going to start the process by clicking on the add project button located up here. Start by naming the project. In this example, I'm going to manage the process for onboarding a new client. I'll keep the name nice and simple and ensure that I use a standardized approach moving forward. Next, I can link the project to the appropriate contact record. You'll need to ensure that you've set up this contact record as a first step before you can add a linked project. The additional contact field allows you to also link any other contacts that this project might relate to. For example, if you're onboarding multiple clients at the same time, they can all be added to the same project. Or, if I was using this to manage an event, we could add a list of all the attendees. This is a really simple way to centralize your work and ensure that the relevant parties are all linked together. We'll look in more detail at some of the advantages of this shortly. The description field allows you to add additional context or any information that may be helpful when reviewing the project at a later stage. The next set of fields allows you to change the board, stage, or status. I'm happy with the information that's populated here, so I don't need to update any of this. I will, however, add an expected close date. This is really helpful when it comes to filtering, and it's a clear reflection of when you expect the work to be completed or what to prioritize. Just like on your contacts or opportunities, you can implement tags. Tags are a really powerful feature for segmenting and organizing your records. Since this example is for onboarding a new client, and I know I already have a tag set up for this, I can search and apply in a matter of seconds. Next, we can apply a track that's already been set up for my account. Tracks are a really popular feature, and they come in very useful if you tend to complete the same series of tasks for each project you work on. I've set up some tracks in advance. All I need to do is search for which one is relevant, and then click on it to have it applied. This has added the tasks I need to complete for this stage of the project in one simple click. I recommend reviewing our tracks training material if you haven't had a chance to implement this really handy feature. You can also build your own custom fields to help ensure that all the information that's being logged on your projects is relevant to the services and processes that you manage. If I click this tile, I can then expand the view and see what fields have been set up already. I'll now update my pre-built fields. This is a really powerful way to ensure that I'm capturing the required details for my projects. For example, you could log the priority rating of a piece of work or capture a key date, such as a renewal. The owner and team field lets you change who the project is assigned to. I'm going to keep this example assigned to myself. However, I can also update this after the record has been created. Now that I'm happy with all the information that I've captured, I can click Save and my project will be created. You can clearly see that the new record has been added to our board. If I move to the tile and click on the name of the project, we can open it and begin logging key updates. Here you'll find all the necessary tools for staying on top of things. And this view is a really useful snapshot of the individual project. The top of the page shows us our status, board, and stage. If I click here, I can change the stage. I can also close the project once I've completed all the necessary steps. We can clearly see the track that was applied upon setup. This provides us with a list of all the tasks that we need to complete. You'll also find at the top right-hand corner of the page, the Add Task button, so we can schedule anything that needs to be actioned outside of our track. If you click on the Log Activity button, you'll be able to jot down important notes, minutes from your phone calls, and any other key activities. By clicking on the Send Email button, you can compose a new email and choose from your own custom templates. If I click the Template dropdown, I can see what's been configured on my account already, and I can choose whichever template may be relevant. This is another great way to standardize your team's approach to project work. If we go back, you'll also see the Files area. Here I can attach documentation, such as contracts, or any job material that might need reference later. The left-hand side of the page summarizes your tags and custom fields. You'll also find the Edit button and the Actions menu. If I click our Actions menu, which is reflected with this drop-down arrow, 
we'll find some really helpful features. We often find that projects are used for managing post-sale processes. You can create a link between the project and its related opportunity to help you track the entire process of new business from start to finish. This is a great way to bridge the two records and can really promote collaboration. There are two ways in which you can do this. If I have already created the project, I can click Link Opportunity and then enter the opportunity name and click here on Link. The opportunity details can now be seen in the left-hand side of the project view. And I can also jump directly to the sales record if needed. If you haven't created your project yet, you can also action this directly from the sales opportunity by using the actions menu on this record. The second way can be really useful for when you are winning a sale as you can quickly create a linked project. A handy feature is that all projects have their own individual Dropbox address for helping log email communication. If I click back on the actions menu and then attach an email, you'll find this. You can also use the copy button located here within the project to help action this. When it comes to adding your email communications to Capsule, we recommend exploring our dedicated Outlook and Gmail integrations. These are both really powerful ways to centralize email conversations, and from your mailbox you can associate the thread to the relevant project, contact, or opportunity. We have set up videos available within our training library, which showcase how to take advantage of these powerful integrations. If you want to link historical notes, or activity, to a new project you have created, no problem. Simply find the note or the activity on the contact's history, click the Actions menu next to the date stamp, and then use the option to edit. Click on the drop-down list Link To, located here in the bottom right corner, select the project, and then Save. If I navigate back to my project, the system will now mirror this activity from the contact's history to the project history. This is a really good way to add all the relevant updates across the two records and it will help ensure you have full visibility on all completed work. Now I mentioned earlier using projects to manage a process for multiple clients. Let me use the search bar up here at the top of the page to jump quickly to a different project that I've already set up. Here you can see I've added a number of contacts to help oversee an event that we're running. The advantage of this is that I can click here on the Open as a List button from here, I can then complete different bulk actions for this group, such as adding a note or applying a tag to all their records. This is a really useful way to quickly update everyone related to a particular project. Lastly, let's now take a look at the advantage of filtering on our list view. We'll navigate back to the Projects tab and now click here on our second view. We have a number of standard project lists in place already, which you can see here by clicking on Saved Lists. However, you can create your own lists, which can be shared, and then save them into place. Another great advantage of this view is that you can gain visibility over all project boards and stages at the same time. For example, I could click More Filters, and by doing a basic filter on the expected close date, I could gain visibility over all the projects that are due to be completed within the next 30 days. You can really drill down on your information and also use the custom fields and tags that you've set up to create powerful segments. Let's apply an additional filter for the priority rating. This will help us ensure that we're on top of the key projects which need to be delivered soon. When you've applied all the relevant filters, again, you can save your list by clicking on the drop-down, Save List As. You'll then be prompted to name your list and you can also have the option to make it available to the other users on the account. A great way to collaborate. If I now reset my filters, on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll also find some really helpful tools, such as our Export button, the Bulk Move button, which can move projects between stages, our Assign button, the Bulk Tagging button, our Sort by Filters, and our Edit Columns feature. Understanding all these features and how they can help you organize your projects is a really great way to create different types of reports, drill down on your data, and perform bulk updates. That, in a nutshell, is how the capsule projects and project boards can be implemented to support your different service workflows. 
Projects work great alongside opportunities to help manage your post-sales processes and deliverables, but also have a much broader business use. And with features such as our custom fields and tags, they can be adapted in a whole range of powerful ways. If you need any more advice on the topics covered in this video, please head over to our support pages for more articles relating to Capsule or contact our friendly support team and we'll gladly help you out.